Today we're going to be reviewing the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids and their locations on the periodic table. Let's start by looking at the nonmetals. The nonmetals include atoms such as hydrogen, which is number one on the periodic table, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, the noble gases found in group 18, along with several others that I'm shading here in blue. Properties of nonmetals include being dull, meaning they are not reflective or shiny. They are poor conductors of heat and electricity, and they also break very easily when placed under stress. Next up, we have the metalloids, which are going to be here in green. They're going to be found along this black kind of zigzag line. We sometimes call that the staircase or stair step on the periodic table. So your metalloids are going to have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Sometimes they are shiny or reflective. Um, other times they do not conduct heat or electricity. Finally, we have the metals, which make up the largest group on the periodic table. That is going to be everything that is being shaded here in red. As you can see, it contains elements such as aluminum, copper, gold, silver, sodium, magnesium, calcium. Your metals are going to be shiny. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. And they also are malleable, meaning that they bend instead of breaking. Next up, we're gonna examine some examples of each of the groups of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Here are some examples of metals found on the periodic table. We have copper, which is number 29, so copper is used a lot in wiring and it can bend and conduct heat and electricity. We also have zinc, which appears right next to copper, number 30. Steel, which is actually a combination of several elements. And nickel, which is found most commonly in our nickel coins. Notice on all these examples that they are somewhat shiny and they can take different shapes. Next, we're going to talk about the metalloids, which have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Boron, number five on the periodic table, is considered a metalloid, although it is kind of dull and brittle in appearance. Silicon is somewhat shiny and found in a lot of our plastics. Germanium also looks dull. Arsenic and antimony both appear shiny. And terulium is somewhat shiny, but also kind of dull. Finally, we have our nonmetals, which are generally dull, poor conductors, and then break easily instead of bending. Sulfur, number 16, appears as a yellow uh, solid. Nitrogen can be found as a gas. We have selenium, that's a solid, and then bromine, which can be a liquid or a gas. To recap, metals are the most common elements found on the periodic table. They're generally shiny, good conductors, they bend and are most often found as solids. Nonmetals appear on the right side of the periodic table. They can be classified as solid, liquid, or gases. They are opposites of metals in that generally they are dull, poor conductors of heat electricity, and they break easily instead of bending. The third group are your metalloids, which are found along the staircase or the black zigzag line on the periodic table. Your metalloids have properties of both metals and nonmetals.